Uh, okay, <coughs> onto onto labs then in 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 particular. So I have a couple. I have one slide on the things we often find, uh, and you can mentally tick the boxes if you want to with these. Uh, so one of the most common things uh, is variation in incoming workload. So volatility, either in the amount of work that you get or in the mix of the work that you get, which is pretty much the same thing. And that is the dynamic that drives most labs that we see. That's the fight. That's what they're struggling with day in, day out. And it's the problem we're most commonly trying to, to solve. Okay. We then find that resources, given a volatile workload, resources are often dedicated by test or by task. So you're Mr. HPLC or you're on wet chemistry. If you're new in, you're on waters for the first two years unless you leave, uh, whatever. So, um, and you combine that with volatility, sometimes you're busy, sometimes you're not. The other version of, of uh, resource allocation that we see is weekly bucket scheduling. Uh, that's not a very technical term, but what it means is that a supervisor sits down, has a look at what they think is going to come or in a queue, and they assign it to uh, an analyst for the next week, trying to fill their week, and they do that every week. That has two impacts. One is that... Uh, if, if you're a very good analyst and you get everything done this week, you're getting more next week, so that's not strictly fair. Uh, and the second thing that happens is that because you have assigned everybody, everything else that comes in that week now has to queue and wait until it gets a chance to get scheduled. So if it comes in on Monday, it's going to wait till the following Monday at the very best before it gets scheduled. And if it comes in the Friday, it's only going to wait till, till the following Monday. So it, what it does is it gives you variable lead times, which is... Generally, what labs want to do is be fast and consistent in terms of lead time so the business can plan around them. Uh, so weekly bucket scheduling de facto gives you variable lead times. So not a good thing to be doing generally. And the last one is then available work through available people, which is a variation on the weekly bucket team. Is, so it's what do we have to do? Uh, there's 15 samples. We have 10 people. You attribute them out. Next week, we have... 25 samples and we still have 10 people but we still give them uh, everything okay until somebody falls over and then we might rethink our strategy so that's quite common I, I i've been a little bit cynical here maybe too much for my own good but all of those methods of allocation have a serious impact on your your, your performance if you want the result to be different you have to move away from these traditional ways of organizing people Okay, queues and high volumes of WIP is very common. Uh, you know, sometimes when you look at the, the, t the touch time or the test time, for example, versus its queuing time, it's a factor of 1 to 10. In other words, you know, things go in and they sit in queues and, you know, for a very long time compared to the test time. So. And if you have lots of WIP, that drives lots of non-value added activity for sure. So, and that's, I'm describing that here. So we often see significant effort in controlling, tracking and prioritizing samples resorting, finding samples, running lists, all that sort of stuff. Very elaborate Excel trackers, uh, you know, and God knows what else. Um, fast track systems or bullet batches or hot samples or whatever you want to call them. We've seen every variation on that theme that you can imagine. And uh, they usually don't work very well. And usually for the same reason is that the proportion of um, uh, samples that are fast track grows very quickly and now you have too many and they can't all be fast track and the other thing is that a fast track system is very disruptive for all the other samples it usually reduces your your productivity because you're breaking setups or not um, filling runs as, as uh, you know as is as, as full as they could be and the second thing is that if you promote one batch then you obviously demote another one so you, you're back into variable lead times again and that drives it more the answer is actually very simple which is you move everything so fast and so reliably that you don't need to track anything and you have a very predictable output. And you're thinking, yeah, wouldn't that be lovely? But that's actually achievable. It's what they've done here. It's what we've done in other projects. Okay, analyst roles generally not optimized or balanced. Uh, so it's, uh, um, you know, capable people seem in this industry to get more to do. Um, you know, and if someone's not very capable, they, they get given something soft in a corner, it's... It's not very well balanced, even from week to week for the same analyst, uh, you know, and that's a problem. Okay, so definitely not optimized. It's not people's time not used well is a very common thing to see. Um, if there is a focus on, on efficiency, it's generally only on the efficiency of an individual test run. And sometimes 
uh, samples are queued longer than they should or need to be because somebody's holding it and holding it till they get enough brothers and sisters, if you like, to make a decent uh, uh, assay. Um, and there's a huge focus on accuracy, all right, because that's the way, I guess, people that work in labs have been trained. Uh, and often efficiencies ignored. But in the end of the day, you are an operational department, whether, whether you like that or not, and you have an impact on how the business performs and how the site performs. Um, you know, so it should get some emphasis, as much as the accuracy. Okay, uh, performance management is usually pretty weak in labs, uh, and there's normally not much in the way of short interval control. By that I mean, uh, you know, what was yesterday like? What have we planned for today? Uh, have we enough resources? That sort of uh, um, performance management. You know, we do a thing early in in our work with clients, which is we'll ask an analyst, uh, are, you, "Are you doing better this quarter than last quarter?" And they look at you because they have no idea. Normally because the only thing that's measured is lead time, okay, so there's no productivity measure. Uh, and the second thing is it's often not trended or communicated to people, which is a shame. Uh, you know, if you want people to be interested in performance, you've got to at least tell them what it is. Uh, and we see lots of non-value ads around logbooks and documentation and uh, redundant testing and lots of stuff like that. So it's usually a happy hunting ground. Uh, and generally, the result of all those things is long lead times, or if you throw people at the problem, low productivity. Okay? Uh, and sometimes people think, we're in a bit of chaos here, we'll buy a limb system. Um, if you implement limbs over a flawed laboratory process, uh, you'll have um, a semi-automated flawed process. You should change and refine your process uh, limbs will not save you, is basically what I'm saying. It won't correct the basic sort of problems I've described there.